A bodyguard, your Spanish, is good enough. You're crazy. You even looked the part. <laughs> My state, I couldn't go out of course. It's rich guys flashing their cash. It's all for show. Nothing's gonna happen. Yeah? You think they'd hire a drunk or has been? You have to keep it under control. And what if there was, you know, just say uh, a kidnapping attempt? What do I do then? You do your best. They're not gonna be paying you enough to perform miracles. Tuck it up there, wreck them. <laughs> <laughs> this is Film Sack. <laughs> Sure. Hello, and welcome to Film Sack. This is Film Sack, mine of the very depths of film entertainment for all mankind. This is episode 617. I'm Scott Johnson. Joined today by Brian. They love it when he fires his gun at a Mexican rave Dunaway. Oh, they so they start dancing, and it's like, <laughs> let's take it to the street. Mm-hmm. Oh, hi. Hi. This week on Film Sack, man, are we on fire when we track down this action thriller story of hope, love, revenge, and redemption from 2004, starring a young Fanning in a too small for his fancy suit, Denzel Washington, and film like a tool music video from the 90s set south of the border. Am I having a stroke? I feel like I'm having a stroke. No, it's just the religious themes, alcohol, blood loss, and Christopher Walken's bedside Nokia phone collection. Hey, honey, he's back. Listen, buddy. We don't swim in your toilet, so don't bleed in our pool. Anywho, <laughs> movie slideshow fact time. In 2004, there was one kidnapping every 60 minutes in Latin America. Hey, movie, 60 minutes is an hour. Just say one every hour. <laughs> 70% of the victims do not survive, and 30% end up on the side of the road crying about it. And 100% do not die in this movie. Yep, knowledge is power. No one is half the battle. The more you know, don't do drugs. Randy? <laughs> You think God will forgive us for what we've done? No, that's fine. I wasn't planning on dying anyway. <laughs> wow. Top shelf once again. Very mm, well done. Up on the top shelf, baby. Yeah, nicely done. Also with us, Randy, I know you took my fingers, but thank you for at least mm-hmm. cauterizing them, Jordan. Aloha, Scott. Brian. Brian. Oh, Randy. Thank you for coming to Mexico to try out for this job, and thank you for happening to be both a former commando and a fluent Spanish speaker, Mm. while also being inexpensive. Weird. It's like you're straight out of a soap opera. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I'm the middle-aged guy who I guess is almost the comic relief around here, and it's my job to tell other people what a badass you are later. First... You need to prepare to be the bodyguard, walking tall, Batman, dark man, true grip, Punisher. Mm. And you're going to get there by following my three rules for men on fire. Number one, start out gruff. Like, so gruff that no one would ever want to work with you. Much less (laughs) just, like, instantaneously give you their child. Why? Mm. Uh, Number two. Melt that ice, especially with any women you can find. Talk to the mom. Talk to the first nun you see. You can't (laughs) seek revenge later if you don't make everybody love you soon. Hmm. Number three, when you get the chance to kill like 10 different people, you are required to kill them all differently. You're like a cartoon villain, but not one of those cartoons where they reuse the same loop over and over. No, no, no. You're the kind of cartoon villain who sticks a bomb right up the ass. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. Right up the anus. And this city needs an enema. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, with us finally, Brian, he's just a professional ibit. Oh, I am a professional. Mm. Why do you if you keep saying that? Mm. Um, all right, a little bit of a uh, confession here. I uh, so last week we were talking about oh, what's our next movie, Randy? And and um, and I think you know you said oh, a Denzel Washington film with uh, Dakota Fanning, an action film, and I'm like oh, cool. And so I I went and saw, I saw Expendables three, thinking that was what <laughs> we were doing film sack on. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I thought, God, it's really weird because we usually don't do movies that are uh, on their premiere week in the theater. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But okay, I'll Expensive. do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And so then yesterday when I saw you putting clips in uh, in Discord, I was like, oh, 
shit, Man on Fire. And I'd already done the song. I'd already written it. I'd already recorded it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play my um, uh, Equalizer 3. Did I call it something else a minute ago? No. Equalizer 3 <laughs> song. You got it right. Yes, Equalizer. And, um, and I'll just correct it uh, as we go um, with, with the correct information for Man on Fire. Okay, e- here we excellent. go. Excellent. <laughs> It's Equalizer 3. No, actually, it's Man on Fire. I give it a C. Not as good as Man on Fire. It stars Denzel Washington. He's a force to be reckoned with. Dakota Fanning. That actually tracks with this movie, too. Denzel is XCIA. Man on Fire jibes with what you say. Dakota is the one he must it's help. It's like you read my review up on Yelp. Singing old blues songs. By blues, I think you mean Blue by you. fixing all the... I that have wrong. like we watched the same thing all along. The opinion of mine. <laughs> Shit, I know what's next. That Dakota's real fun. Nope, you can't say that. <laughs> I really can't believe. Not appropriate in 2004. How time's flown by. Keep in mind she's currently 29. Denzel speaks perfect <laughs> Italian. I think you mean it's Spanish. He speaks. Putting a gun to everyone's He noggin. put a bomb in that fat guy's I butt. I really can't <laughs> say. Brian, don't hold out, baby. It's man. On fire. Wow. Nice. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Holy you did shit. say Expendables 3 and then. Oh, I did say Expendables. Oh, you said yeah, Expendables? Yeah. I was oh, trying crap. to figure it out, but I don't know. It didn't, yeah. I don't know if you did we'll or not. I have to go post. back to the we'll tape. Post. Uh, that's amazing. And also, uh, it is crazy that the very week we do this, they have a premiere where these two actors get reunited. <laughs> yeah. Not just reunited, but my God, there are so many parallels between the two. I did actually watch Equalizer 3 before I watched Man on Fire, but I did, did see you Man on really? Fire back, on, oh. back, on, uh, back in 2004. I don't know if I've seen it since. This, did I think, you? is only my second watching. Mm. Okay, but good. it was like, oh, okay, he's XCA. Oh, okay, he, uh, you know, Dakota Fanning's in trouble. He needs to help her. Oh, uh, you know, he has to go to a, a different uh, place outside the U.S. and kind of acclimate and learn the and be fluent, completely fluent in the language. And um, they do it on so purpose. Many, do you think? Do you feel like it was a the director was like, or actors or writers or whatever, or like, hey, what if we reunited these two? No one will, you know, those who remember will know, you know, that kind of. Thing. I don't think so. Maybe, yeah. I mean, there's probably a little bit of like, oh, if we get Dakota Fanning, there'll be that that moment for the Man on Fire fans who say, oh, look, they are they're together again, and mm-hmm. they, they don't seem as far apart in age this time, mm-hmm. but. Um, but no, and I hadn't seen Equalizer 2, uh, so I need to see that. I've, I've kind of Oreo cookied wow. this thing. The fact that you've seen the first one is amazing. I, I, I think oh, the, first the first one's, one's, the first one's pretty great. good. Is I think the good? first the I... first one suffers from a bad ending. I think the ending really okay. sucks in that movie, but the, I like the first one. I haven't seen the second either, so maybe I'll mm-hmm. stack these and well, C3. out of all the 80s did, TV shows to movies, that was not one that I was clamoring for. <laughs> oh, let's get an equalizer opening. Well, yeah! I know. Yes, you know, the old Edward Woodward. By yeah, the way, yeah. and I noticed that when I was looking at Edward Woodward, that if you take, if you subtract word, W-A-R-D, from his first and last names, you're left with Ed Wood. <gasps> oh, Ed Wood! Conspiracy. Holy, du- Illuminati! Holy, holy Johnny Depp, mother effers. <laughs> Can't believe it. <laughs> exactly. Well, anyway, the movie we watched is Man on Fire, and I've this is my like, fifth watching. Um, I will let oh, wow. fake Scott Fletcher explain this movie, all right? We haven't heard from real Scott Fletcher in a while, so here's God, fake Scott, Scott Fletcher. Faker. Here he is. Man on fire! <laughs> In Mexico City, a former CIA operative swears vengeance on those who committed an unspeakable act against the family he was hired to protect. Pretty simple. (laughs) Pretty simple. Although his intro. Man on fire! That's the very loud. I love it. Fire! I'm, it's one of those times where I'm like, hey, you've you've had 20 years, IMDb. Can't you write a better description of this movie? I mean, like, it's, it's terrible. It's, uh, terrible. Who, it, who writes those the anyway? Users do. Like, uh, users do. One person studio? No, yeah, it's users that do those. All users, and that's and that uh, stuff. So gets... the, if you go, so if you sign up, IMDb Pro, which I've considered in the past. Anybody done that? Before? No, I never did. Yeah, I did uh, oh, yeah. very briefly. Yeah. If you look yeah, at you if you in? look at the alternate descriptions, there are plenty that are longer and more in more in depth and better summaries. But the ones that get voted up are the are the simple ones, and I don't know why that is. Probably because they're simple. But why does that make me mad for some reason? I don't when know. you say that the users write that, why mm-hmm. does 
Why does yeah. IMDb feel like a business built on the backs of free? It's entirely uh, content because it content is content creation because it people. is all of it is like if you find I thought out the studios did a lot of this. So, well, no, some of mad. them do. Some of them go in and do their own bios. Some of them go in and do their, uh, you know, a, a, a company that is like a oh, what do you call them? I guess. Uh, what do you call them when they're in charge of an actor's life? PR. Not PR, but manager like their manager. Or, uh, That's what I'm trying to say is manager. Uh, if you're like a management company and you've got like four or five big names under you or whatever, I'm sure you go in and do stuff in here. That's probably part of your job. But mm-hmm. a lot of it is just straight up. I could go See, in See, I don't here find and, this like I, I don't. Maybe it's the pro. I don't know. Because like Wikipedia, it's like I can understand Wikipedia. It's like. Open for anybody who's intelligent mm-hmm. enough and and uh, you know dedicated enough to make something happen. Whereas mm-hmm. this feels like mm-hmm. <laughs> like right. all you have to do is pay ninety nine bucks and you can yeah. give the synopsis. Is this, is this my synopsis is this my blue check mark? Movie. Well, mm-hmm. you guys yeah. are, you guys remember mm-hmm. when one of our re- listeners went and put uh, <laughs> fake stuff about Stallone getting hired every time? But that was just yeah. trivia. I felt like trivia is user submitted, but. Yeah. yeah, I don't. They don't like demarcate it. The parts it. They, that are protected from that sort of thing. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't think curated. you can go in. And, I don't think you could go into Denzel Washington's list and and go. His name is now Dornzel <laughs> Washing, but I don't think you recently can do that. changed his name to. Yeah, I would love that. Uh, mm-hmm. Somebody out there with a full blown access thing, get write us and tell right. us how you do this because we'd yeah, be curious let about us it. Know what uh, what exactly you have access to? But this is interesting because so I mentioned I've seen this movie five times. I I love it. It's one of my favorite Tony Scott films. It's one of my favorite Denzel Washington films. I think Dakota Fanning is an insanely talented young actress in this. Yes. She put um, the Fannings on the on the map. The movie the movie basically hinges like a lot of her movies honestly. They hinge on this movie hinges on when you hire your child actress. If right. she doesn't nail it, the whole thing's effed. Mm-hmm. It's just right. not it will be not nearly as good if Dakota Fanning didn't didn't do an amazing job and there's trivia about how Denzel Washington was just sort of you know, he would become speechless listening to her in a scene and forget he was supposed to do a line. Yeah. I like, watched that interview with Denzel and uh, Tony Scott. It was it was really good. He talked about that just standing and watching. Yeah, she's incre- She's mm-hmm. really incredible. And, um, I, you know, I feel like I haven't seen a lot lately that she's been in just because I haven't seen the thing she's in. But I assume she's as good as ever. And her sister Ellie's great. And those mm-hmm. Dakotas or those Fannings, man. Jeez. Yeah, those is Fannings. It, is it yeah. Ellie? I thought I think it was it's just L. L. Oh, I was it L? I always thought it was Ellie. Ellie. Just L? Okay. Just L. There's no I in there. It's just E L L E. She's. Uh, I saw her. I guess her most recent thing for me would have been the the Great. I guess the Great. Yeah. She's very still good still that. going right. Like uh, yes. just had canc- a new season this year. Canceled yeah. though. I think. Uh, no cancellation. Canceled or did it did it get to finish on its own terms? It, it got just it got, <laughs> it got strike it got strike canceled. So we don't. Oh, know. Oh yeah. Know. I keep. Yeah. I think every, that every other day I'm like, oh, it's it's fall time. And I'm like, oh, shit. All the Strikes. stuff with really expensive like clothes and period piece set. I feel like those are getting nailed right now. They're getting hit Probably with this so. pretty bad. Yeah. But anyway, uh, this is uh, this is uh, the first reuniting of Denzel and Tony Scott since their first collaboration, which was mm, like O three 3 with Crimson Tide, which we need to get on our yep. list, by the Did way. Did we not do Crimson Tide? No, we have not. 99. No, or 99, sorry. We need to do that. Why we haven't yeah. beyond me. I do not understand yeah. why we have not done that. So like, let's keep starting at the top here. The Tony Scott, Tony Scott, uh, directed this movie. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Ridley Scott's mm-hmm. brother. Mm-hmm. So it's a screenplay based on a book that, you know, so. And a movie, uh, right? Right. There's a previous movie. There's mm-hmm. actually two previous movies oh. named man on fire, but the okay. book only one's associated with it. Right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just curious, Scott, like, uh, what are your top five Tony Scott movies? Oh man, uh, um, <clears throat> it's so it's easy to throw Top Gun one in there. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's it. I think that Man on Fire. I really like uh, that the one he did right before he died. The the plane or the train one. Um, run uh, run away. Shit. Hold on. Run away. Unstop- shit. Unstop- I train? love that Unstoppable. one. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. I really yeah. liked Unstoppable. Another Denzel joint. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's see. Probably after that, I would say. Oh gosh! Uh, oh gosh! Um, um, you caught me with my <laughs> pants down here. Um, you you kind of did. I'm trying to um, think. Uh, what else? What else is there? I can't think of anything else. I know there's fine. others. Oh, it's Enemy fine. of the State. It's I love great. Enemy of the State. Big, big fan of that. And 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 Crimson Tide. That movie rocks. 
Love Crimson mm-hmm. Tide. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Sad end, by the way, Tony Scott, if you didn't, if you don't know the yeah. story of Tony yeah, Scott, he, sad he, end. Yeah, yeah. He, he got diagnosed with something and then decided to, to take his own life, and it was on a own, huge bummer. Terms. Leave on his own terms, right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I and uh, I remember hearing a, or watching an interview with Ridley Scott, his brother, uh, right. and I'd never seen such a sad, he was so sad. That was just yeah. the saddest yeah. thing. They seem tight. Those, oh, very uh, tight. I mean, they yeah. this production company, Scott Free Productions or whatever, that was their yeah. joint, man. They were like making yeah. movies left and right. Oh, Beverly Hills Cop 2, I'll give them that. That was oh, really good. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, good love that. Mm-hmm. Days of Thunder. Yeah, 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 maybe not so much. Oh, get true, in the car, really. Cole, great, I oh. suppose. Oh, Crimson Tide was 95. Holy shit. Oh, now you're yeah, so like, I, thanks to True Romance, I don't, I can't no. put uh, Man on Fire in my top five Tony Scott Ooh. movies. It's just... He's he's not a great director, but he's made some really solid action movies. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Even that taking it, of Pelham one two three remake, I liked. A lot oh, of people yeah, are, don't good. like the original. They like the original, mm-hmm. but they don't like yeah. that one. I say yeah. to them, eat a poo. I think it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you tell us how you really feel, Scott? I yeah. think he has. There's a there is a um, like Ridley Scott is you, you know lots of historical stuff and very right. serious and he does his fair share of really important sci-fi of course and genres things and you know where are we without blade runner and alien and all that but sure. but ridley scott I, when i think of him i think of a uh, big prestige thing like the upcoming mm-hmm. napoleon and gladiator and these sorts of things um and I, when i think of tony scott i think this is the guy who did that era of bruckheimerness mm-hmm. better mm-hmm. than better than most like to me tony scott was was the OG Bruckheimer era. Uh, I, I use Bruckheimer as a adjective, really not. Right. But uh, right, no, you're, right. you're absolutely right. There's a, there's a certain style of filmmaking and it really peaks with this movie. I feel, I feel yeah, like and, this movie it, like puts every part of that style of filmmaking on display constantly. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. Think so I, I love, mm-hmm. hate this. Uh, <laughs> I, I love, hate it because it's, it's, it's really interesting to look at, how this is shot but then it also is a very annoying i'm like oh god why did we ever do this thing where they have this weird yeah you know weird camera shots and weird slow flickering. motion lots of flickering lots mm-hmm. of flickering i'm like mm-hmm. oh it's yeah. so asinine but also it feels very much like 2004 film it so does but also there are it. times of it where i was like now this is just the right amount you're doing fine yeah and then yeah. there are times you're like whoa, whoa whoa pull it back a little bit dude what are you doing and i don't know if it's, this is the dp if this is like right uh, you know who's it's who's a very interesting interpretation of emotionally conveying the idea of the character having a disconnect being uh recovering from alcohol uh, those those moments when you, if you've ever had any type of uh, recovery, which probably Tony Scott understands this very well, it kind of feels like what's being represented on screen. I just think there's other techniques that probably convey it well, better. Maybe I don't know. The, the, the movie doesn't really care to show you too much on screen. That's the that's the weird thing about it. So mm-hmm. much happens off screen that you're supposed to like know and have feelings about you know Mm -hmm. like even like gosh you've got mickey rourke playing such an interesting character yeah Yeah. Yeah. and it's like he everything he does (laughs) that's badass is off screen completely yeah yeah face Mm -hmm. face down in the pool blood Mm -hmm. loved it gone yeah, yeah. I li- also, some of it's just symbolic. Like, I don't think he ever jumped in the pool all bloody. Maybe he did, but if he didn't, it was a no. great metaphor for... How, how is this movie two and a half hours long, and it doesn't show you so <laughs> yeah, much of we the don't, movie? We don't yeah. got time for that. We got no, no time. The very last thing in the movie, as the credits are rolling, is a still that yeah. is a, that is that is put in place of an entire scene that we don't get. Mm, There's right, an entire right, scene right. of the cops catching the actual bad guy, the baddest yeah. bad guy, and killing yeah. him. Oh, and yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. It's kind of like told as a "Where are they now?" Kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. Hey, hey, you know, you could have shown me this. No, yeah. I'm glad, and dude. I'm really glad you brought was, this up because I wrote this down. I think those moments make people in the theaters. Whenever you put text on your screen to say where, what ended up happening, yes. you you run the risk of people going, "Is this based on a true story? Is this real? Is this?" I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this exactly. Up. Right. That's a large discussion. You're right, Scott. That's yeah. exactly. There's a large discussion online. Is it based on a true story? Yeah. Eh. Very, very. <laughs> the book no. that this is based on is based on a true story, but it's not even the same character. It's not like a one one to one. Not even close. Story. No. Not even close. Right. It's no. a total just, reimagination. Just, I, at, 
when that when they put up that still, I threw popcorn <laughs> at the screen because <laughs> you've, got, you've got Giancarlo Giannini. Like, like, well, again, so underutilized in this movie. All he's yeah. doing is doing surveillance, like right. the entire right. movie. He you've spends got, his time on the phone and on a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Making you, out with the ladies. Got, you know, you've got him and you've got this uh, bad guy. What's his name? Uh, uh, Victor Fuentes, right? Mm-hmm. Is the bad guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think and, the voice. Is and you don't even have them. The voice. You don't even have them act for the final, you know, confrontation. No, no, right. him in the pool. And here's what's funny. Like, so when Denzel gets in the car at the end and they're driving off, I swear to God, I was going to say, oh my God, how great would it be if he looks down, he's got the watch on that he's got the, uh, yeah. you know, that he put mm-hmm. the bomb in the, uh-huh. the dude's butt and he's got in his own butt. And, <laughs> I uh, thought and he's about that. Blow it up. <laughs> yeah. This morning, um, Hilarious. I'm, I'm, as I'm getting uh, my music together and I'm watching a couple movie clips, even though I watched the movie last night and watching movie clips. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things that comes up is alternate ending. And so oh. I guess this might be on the DVD or Blu-ray or whatever, but yeah. it's, it's filmed with some idiots like, oh, I'm going to play it on my TV and then use my phone to record it. Drives oh me my nuts. God. Hate those. But the alternate ending is... Is uh, them driving uh, Denzel Creasy back to uh, the Good. voice's house, and they're talking. And uh, meanwhile, Denzel's kind of looking down at his wrist, and he pulls his sleeve back, and he's got the the uh, the other uh, watch on. And he smart. blows, blows oh. them both up in the apartment. So it was being telegraphed. We're not insane. It exactly. was. Oh, yes. Dang it! That sucks. I kind of like that. I, I like that ending too. And I'm wondering what made them decide not to use that. Well, I think. Mm. Well, I think well, for one thing, our character we've fallen in love with. I I like Creasy just slowly passing away, but I was interested in a little bit more revenge, even if it come in the form of a butt bomb and explode him <laughs> up. I mean, we, if you walked away and went like Creasy died from a butt bomb, all right. Yeah. The obvious reason is we aren't shown Creasy's actual death, proof of death. Right. Right. This movie, just in case we want to make another movie. Exactly. He just kind of drifts off and you don't know if he just passes out from, you know, he was tired. It was a pretty permanent situation, right? Yeah, exactly. There's no question with butt bomb. Butt bomb will take you out. I was mad at him (laughs) for giving himself over to the bad guys. Like that was uh, that was also a part I, where I'm just like this doesn't make sense for this character to me at all. Well, that yeah. part didn't bother me in the sense that he knew that this was the end of the road, and if he's going to get the girl back, that's all that mattered. And also, that was a twist for him anyway because he didn't know she was still alive. So he he's willing to make that sacrifice. His life is kind of gone and, and shitty anyway. Yeah, he was going to die anyway. I didn't right? have a problem with that. Dying. What I had a problem with is he got that gunshot to his left lung way earlier yeah. than yeah. he died in the car. And was doing pretty damn good for a guy with a giant bullet right through the middle of his chest. And yeah, and I yeah, kept thinking, sure. if yeah. that were you wearing a vest, am I, did I read this wrong? Because you're way too energetic. And then it finally, by the end, he's survival. Yeah. Yeah. It upends the narrative. He is spending days and days on a murderous rampage right. over this girl. And then when he gets her back alive, he should feel something to carry on living right he should right the should hope be trying to defend her like a, you, you run to that car now no he's a he's a bodyguard well, he should be i think i, I, I think you just answered why they didn't do that alternate ending because the the way that this works is that he knows he's dying he's got a bullet in his chest yeah. uh he's barely breathing now he's barely moving and he knows this is it so the exchange is to get her safe and then he's just yeah. going to die. And had they gone all the way to revenge, butt bomb, it would have been, it would have <laughs> been like, bomb. it would have been like, Coming well, I, then, then I would have been actually, I would have been more mad and would be more on your side, Randy. Cause I'd be like, well, okay. If he, if he's capable of this, then he could have, yeah. Well, he's a professional, you know. He's just gonna yeah. he's just gonna blink out. Is he man on fire? Is he off fire now? Is he dead? Is yeah, that, they put the, him out. I think also, yeah. you know, you've got the audience sitting there. All they can think of is imagining Denzel Washington greasing up a uh, an yeah, enema. Yeah, yeah, that's the like problem. A, <laughs> it's the visual. Up his own butt. It destroys our image of <laughs> Creasy, uh, right? And by yeah. the way, uh, you got to go back and rewatch when he's got the guy tied down to the hood of the car. Uh, you know the president of Hermanadad. Yes, <laughs> Harry uh, Man. You, that scene first starts. He has just inserted the thing because he's still got a, a nitro glove on and he's mm-hmm. taking mm-hmm. it off. Yep. That's what I was wearing when I saw the glove. I was like, "What's he doing the gloves?" Like, oh, mm-hmm. but but yeah. stuff. I, I would be a bad <laughs> but stuff. I'd yeah. be a very bad assassin revenger because when it came to that moment oh, yeah. where you got to put it up yeah. as Hooter, I would have I would have balked. <laughs> 
I would well, have, it would have been a real life what Girl Scout. Yeah, he, did, he didn't have to. It was just fun. It was right, just right. Great. That's the thing. He did not have to actually do that. The bomb could have been in the guy's shorts. It could have been in the under the hood of the car. The yeah. bomb didn't have mm-hmm. to be inside the bad guy. Uh, it, I disagree all. because okay. I think I think if you're the bad guy, uh and you don't feel something like that, you might think that he's just bluffing and you're not going to okay, give him right, information. Right, right. That's a good but point. You definitely, know, you, when feel, there's been, you definitely you, know there's been butt stuff, right? It's like, oh, you would butt feel stuff. that. I mean, I'm assuming <laughs> yeah. you would feel that uh, in your butt and you'd be yeah. like, oh, he is not kidding. I was wondering right. what that was. I thought I, I thought I had to take a poo. Yes, but, mm, yes, mm, mm, yes mm. You, you put something in the guy, but I'm saying the bomb doesn't have to be the something. The oh, bomb just put yeah, something in the guy. If you're going to go the effort, you stuck a baby put something in the guy. <laughs> might as well have a bomb in it. <laughs> effort. It's no, that's exactly. a good point. If you're going to go through the process, may as well put it up there. But we we single handedly added a lyric to Eddie Murphy's hit song, and now it's uh, <laughs> do put C four in your, your bag. Yeah. There you go. Put some C four. I mean, bottom butt. line, bottom line, this is a weird movie, and it makes me it makes me think about the filmmakers a little too much. Mm-hmm. I like I don't want to I don't want to. Th- Think about you writing a script and and putting together a scene where a guy gets a bomb stuck in his butt. Mm, like right. it just I don't I don't know. There's something about it that like takes me out of the movie. I mean, it's, it didn't take me out of the movie. I I mean, I'm a giant revenge film nerd. I love this stuff. Oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anytime, you know, you John Wick up the place, I'm in. I'm kind of all in on that. Um, which is why I want to see the Equalizer third and final Equalizer because yeah. you know again these are in some ways it's OG John Wick or you know came out before all that. Um, and now it continues, but anyway, I like, I like all those kind of concepts of creative dismantling of everyone who's wronged you is a fun, it's a fun path to go on. And I do think you have to kind of get creative now. Could, could it have been something else besides a bomb up the butt? Probably, but but I'm fine with it. Like, you know, yeah, tying I, I the guys it to be, I need it to be for a reason for it to be up his butt. I really kind of wanted, if, if you just give me just anything, if you just had said, Oh, he sodomized some, you know, so some of the people they kidnapped yeah. or something like, okay, yeah. ha ha ha. You got it back, but he didn't do that. So that usually. Yeah. Usually there. you have that stuff themed. So it's like, well, you You're did right. this thing. So this is going to be much worse for you because you did this thing. And in this case, it was just, yeah, it was a little random. I, I agree. I agree with that, but I still think it's an effective. Like it was working on me, even this fifth watching, where I was like, "How horrible would this be? You're this hairy, oh, yeah. nasty bastard yeah. well, that's tied the to thing. the front it of a car with a thing up that's your butt." That's what was. Yeah, that was the thing that was good about it. Is because we need to feel a connection to the character, but we also need to feel like we would never go that far, so we can feel just a little bit uneasy with what he's doing. So. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it did go to that point, but, but I think you, I, you'd already you know, killed it by the time you uh, took those guys' hand, his fingers off, and and cauterized them. That was and that's cool. the yeah. thing. Like as a as a, a uh, you know Denzel's character and having kind of do these different methods of torture to get the the guys to say what you need to know before you right. end up killing them anyway. Is it just? I don't want to get stuck in a rut. So this guy, I'm going to cut his fingers off. This other guy, I'm going to shove something up his butt. This other guy, I'm going to put a shotgun, you know, like he likes to keep it. He likes to keep the variety. Yeah. yeah I don't want to get to, typecast. Yeah. I don't want to, yeah. uh, I guess, but I don't want to, I don't <laughs> yeah. want to, you know, you don't want to get a like name mix like it up the... a little bit, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't want to be the, you don't want to be like guy. the knuckler or something weird. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> right. Well, definitely not. Right. But, you know, it's like, oh, you know, this hand thing certainly is working with cutting off fingers. I'll just always do that. Oh, I see. Instead yeah. of like, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Like, why, why go to the effort of, of learning another, <laughs> like, oh, let's see, how much C4 would this take? And how much can I fit in this little container? And how much is it going to cost? Eh, no, I've got a machete. How about the finger thing all the time? Yeah, all, all revenge stories go back to The Count of Monte Cristo for me. Mm. This is a, you know, a 200 year old book, right? Yeah. And it's enormous and it's so complicated, right? It's mm-hmm. like, it's it, it will take you days and days of reading to get through all of the Count of Monte Cristo's machinations and his very 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 cold revenge, and I always I always like think about video games right because that's like mm-hmm. how how you structure the you know a, a movie like Man on Fire is you you give me a setup the first act is just a nice story about a guy you know who's got some demons going to Mexico mm-hmm. meeting a girl there everybody's good and then the second act has to give me the big uh, betrayal, right? Right, right. And then the third act is nothing but revenge. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And like there's video, there's boss battles. It's a video game thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Really yeah. are, yeah, so, exactly. you know, Of course your boss, ba- you want your boss battles to be a little bit different 
Yeah. And each NPC has to take you to the next NPC or to the next boss. Mm -hmm. And that boss yeah. cannot be the same fight over and over. Like players yeah, would yeah. be bored. And so they, they, it's just variety for our sake. This isn't even yeah. in a real world scenario. It probably would. Well, I, I don't just know. You'd probably the just same. do the same thing or probably just hold yeah. a gun to their head until they admitted something. I don't know. Exactly. What why Why have to carry around? Oh, well, this time I'm going to do the machete. Oh, no, this time, you know, C4. Uh, yeah, I, have to, I don't want to learn something new. It's like, yeah. listen, this this thing is working for me. <laughs> you yeah. sound like me. I've got like this me. one. Nah. I've got this one app on my phone. I right. know how to use it. Why do I have to learn this? This sounds like app? this sounds like my love life. I got one move. <laughs> Does yeah. it end with a swirl? I wore, yeah. yeah, I worked really hard to get it, and and it's worked for me so far. I'm sticking with Stick it. Stick with it. If, yeah, if I get it. In a video game, you accidentally get a two handed axe that's got whirlwind and plus nine damage. Mm -hmm. You just use it. On yeah, every boss push. fight, every right. fight. You just no, use from that then thing. on, yeah, you'll favor it. Um, you know, good right. video games make you want to change things up, and I certainly respect that. But uh, mm -hmm. but that's the idea. We as an audience want that. And how you make sure that that's okay without too much analy analyzation, which you are doing now because we're film sack. But the way you do it to make me like this movie, even the fifth time around, is you sell really hard the relationship that was built between Washington and Fanning. And I think they, did they a great job. very good yeah. at that. And this, so because they're good said at that. Three-fourths of this was improv and oh, wow. fanning and, oh, my God. And, and Denzel Washington, they do so good. They have such chemistry. And, and Walken. I guess Christopher Walken and Washington. Oh, Walken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I kept here, waiting for it to be something bigger. But he Well, was here, just here's what man. I thought. So I this is what it. this movie does. It, it makes you think, oh, no, he's going to turn on his friend. Yeah, oh, he's shit. totally going to be a right. He's going right. right. to be yeah. the guy. And you're like, oh, somehow Mickey Rourke isn't the bad guy. We haven't even talked about him yet. This is yeah. Mickey Rourke with a little work done, but not all the all the work he was about oh, no. to get yeah, done. This, this is still like Rourke. midway yeah, through the uh, procedure. This is fine. <laughs> this is yeah, mid Rourke. Yeah, mid Rourke. Mid Rourke. Mid Rourke. Um, I liked it. But, you, but my brain, when I first saw the movie, and even this time, it still happens. I go, he. they could easily say, well, Mickey Rourke by the end wasn't as bad as we thought. Or at the very least, he's not the number one. The number one really is Christopher Walken, who's just yanking all this around. And yeah, we figure as much because we get we see we see all of his burner phones by the side table. They keep calling the character the voice, which makes no sense. Christopher Walken definitely sounds like he'd be a voice, right? Whereas the other guy, <laughs> he should be the voice. he's just yeah. a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he so, and it turns out just absolutely rapping. not to be that way. He's like the nicest yeah. guy in the in the movie, which is against type for him. Yeah, um, yeah, loved and it, it. Uh, I really liked him in it. I really like Mickey Rourke for the brief moments we saw him uh -huh. I, yeah. I think he died unceremoniously though with the head cut off in the pool and stuff he's just in there didn't yeah. get to yeah. see really what went down or what happened but but, but uh they all do yeah. like mark anthony uh gets a gets a crazy villain's death we don't see it it happens mm -hmm. completely happens in another screen. room we yeah. we hear a sound and mm -hmm. it's like okay yeah and that room is so freaking cool and interesting. Mm -hmm. By the way, they're like it's it's That's almost all the candles and the statues and stuff. Yeah, it's almost ridiculous. It's not mm. quite ridiculous, but there's a point where you're like, whoa, these people, <laughs> these people are strange. But yeah. you know, like uh, he's in that amazing. Uh, I don't know. He's got a synagogue in his home, and we're we're just like. <laughs> We're just like, oh, we're in another room looking at Denzel's face, and Denzel doesn't even react. And it's like, why does this movie keep doing this? Yeah, I, I right. want to know. I yeah. want someone to answer this question. Yeah. Why do? Why can't yeah. I? Why can't you show me something? It's a little bit weird. Yeah. Mark Anthony's whole I, role. I think he's. By the way, I think he's a decent actor when he's not. I mean, he's obviously mostly a musician. But I'm looking at his IMDb, and he's really only acted in a handful of things. Everything else is soundtracks yeah. or himself. And right. I don't know why that is, because I thought he was pretty good in this. He's yeah, pretty, he was pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, who we didn't talk about yet is Rachel Takotan, who is yeah. just, yeah. I needed more of her. We just didn't get enough. She was she was the one that was uh, helping him along the way. Um, she was in Falling Down, Con Air, which we watched, uh, yeah. Total Recall. Total Recall, Total Recall. Baby. Yeah, yeah. So she big deal. Oh, loved her. So good here. But it's but, funny uh, watching her and Gian, more. Giancarlo Gianni. Uh, yes, with Wasn't their that weird, weird, mm -hmm. weird freaking love affair they're having was the biggest yeah, crack up was, to me. I'm assuming she was using it. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm assuming she was conference. using using it because uh, to 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 get what she needed. Right, I think she was using her. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm assuming they were. Implied. I don't know. It was just such an odd. I'd forgotten all about that relationship, but uh, it was such an odd thing. It worked. It worked. I, somehow it worked. I don't know why. Yeah, it, it worked, did work. It did I, yeah. I just want to know what could have been because you've got 
both Christopher Walken and Giancarlo Giannini and Rachel Ticotin, and they're yeah. all sidelined yeah. in this movie. The whole movie, yeah. they're all standing on the sidelines watching the action from afar. Mm. And I'm just like, why? What This could have been so, like, if they had been, if there had been a reason for the three of them to be sort of like chasing Creasy right. as he's doing his his revenge yeah, well, or he, something. Yeah. He I don't was know. A, yeah. like, he was a man on fire. And, it's hard to stop a man on fire. He's running. He's on fire. Then, he's on fire. Also, Back also up. Rachel Ticotin is a, is a news reporter with like magical investigatory powers. Like she can find out about bank transactions. Oh, She's right. a reporter. It's amazing. But like, you got to give me a reason why, why is this? Well, how, what, that's, what is, hmm. I, I was assuming that her, that she was using her sexuality to manipulate men of power. I they I can't say for sure. There just wasn't enough information there, but I felt like that was kind of because she felt very reluctant in the things she was doing. And I think yeah. it also reflects the other side of I'm just a professional. In other words, I'm doing what I have to do. Yeah. And I'm doing it in the best way that I can. I'm playing by the rules that are done. here. These are the rules here yeah. and they suck. They're awful good rules, or bad. but I got to right, get, exactly. I'd rather save, you know, these kids from kidnapping than worry about dirty old Giancarlo and his, and his bad winner, you know? <laughs> um, right. But I, I, I thought everybody, including Rada, I think it's Rada. Yeah. Mitchell. Rada Mitchell, Lisa, the Lisa character, she the was wife, great. the mom. Yeah. yeah. She oh, was real yeah. good. I liked her a lot. She was in those, um, those two, uh, uh, Silent Hill movies. We got to watch. Oh those. yeah, okay. and she was also in. Wasn't she the one who was in Pitch Black? Oh was maybe. She? Was she in there? Um, yeah, Pitch, Pitch Black. You guys seen Pitch Black? Pitch, right? We I watched like Pitch, Pitch Black. Bla- I want to watch yeah, the, Pitch Black. Yeah, the the Vin Diesel. No, yeah, yeah. But yeah we, we didn't sh- watch it here, did we? We have not watched it. No, here. We, no should. we haven't. Okay, it here. okay. Um, she was great though. But just this, Randy. I don't think you're wrong, but I think that. The, like all of these, you're right about, okay, they've got these amazing actors, right? With this incredible history and just mm-hmm. like, just such raw talent. And they bring them in as secondary bit characters, which is a little weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with that, but I think that it still works again, based solely for me, it's just based solely on that Lupita Creasy oh, relationship wow. that yes. comes from the swimming and the teaching and the laughing and the smiling and the <laughs> give them a flower and, and the teaching and, <laughs> and the, the good flavin. times yeah, and the flavin <laughs> and, and the diary and, that he finds and then like yeah. mom walks in the room and completely ruins the whole scene like it's such an interesting quiet moment mm-hmm, right? right and mm-hmm. like yeah and, and you're like oh okay so the movie wants to no the movie's just treating her like a milf and she's going to kiss him on the cheek and we're not going to see her again until the very end right. oh come on movie there was supposed to be like, you, you could tell there was supposed to be tension there like yeah you know attraction whatever yeah but they did never pay it off and a part of me is glad though because that happens sure. in all of these movies. And I'm like, you yes. know what? You don't need to do it again. It's fine. You- no, I, I want Creasy to be basically a monk. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, yeah. Like it's, yeah. He's, he he's, had, on a re- he's on a redemption. Uh, if he had like kissed Rachel Ticotin or something, like yeah. I, it wouldn't have surprised me at all. No. But it would have it would have been a very different character than he is. Like his yeah. his uh his lost love is with the bottle. And that is very prominent. Creasy Creasy just trying to get into heaven, right? That's all he's doing. He's just trying to get in it. I mean, maybe. maybe I got really mad at him when he, when he, the first thing he does after he arrives at this, these people's nice mansion with the shrine inside it, uh, is right. let the bird go. Like, I'm like, <laughs> no, you don't do that. You're and we never got no, now. and the yeah, bird, he's a bird in the bucket bird. too. The bird, just, it's nobody's bird, right? It, yeah. Cause the last <laughs> guy left <laughs> free bird, say it, say free bird, free say bird. it. I had in my notes that I was going right. to hold up my, uh, Match and go free bird, or my lighter and go free bird. Uh, I love it. It doesn't work as well on an audio podcast, but we no, know. no, no, really no, no, no. Yeah, yeah we'd know Wait. about it. Yeah, it's um, I don't know. There's so much to say about it. I, I know that there's some bullshit trivia going on, so let's do some of this. Screw um, me. It's been a while since we had one of these, but according to this trivia, trivia, trivia. Tri- oh, that is some very trivia and trivia. Trivia is uh, plural for trivia. <laughs> right. um, so this is just how it says word for word. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Kurt Russell, <laughs> Michael Keaton, Alec Baldwin, Andy Garcia, Keanu Reeves, Val Kilmer, Kevin Costner, Dennis Quaid, Harrison Ford, Mel Gibson, Viggo Mortensen, <sighs> Liam ne- Neeson, Gary Oldman, so Sean Bean, Alan Rickman, Bob Hoskins, and Ed Harris were considered to play John Creasy. Now, no, they weren't. I they watched weren't. the interview yeah. with Tony Scott, and he said there was two, the first two picks were uh, uh, Dakota Fanning and then Denzel Washington. That was it. Yeah, I believe that more than I believe this. But here's where I think I think this is the most BS. 
Because the truth is, sure, you want all the A-listers. I get it. All right. And I think Denzel's in the A-lister group, especially around this era. So he's a perfect pick. They sneak Bob Hoskins in this list. <laughs> that is a weird. Like, this wasn't that close to um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> right. For them to be able to say, his star is on the rise. <laughs> and I love Bob Hoskins. Don't get me wrong. Guy's awesome. Freaking OG Mario. Give it up. Right. But in fact, I think he even, oh no, he died 10 years later. But I, but the idea that he was even remotely on a casting list for this role f- to be creasy, yeah. it's a very different movie. Other, Me, you other this- than that, it feels like copy and paste, copy and paste to every other uh, trivia, IMDb trivia from uh, any action film. Yeah, totally. Although period. Ed Harris is an interesting pick. Viggo Mortensen would be pretty mm-hmm. interesting. Liam Neeson seems like a no-brainer given what we've seen from him yeah, after he does all this. this. Every movie now. Yeah, he's a man on fire in every movie he does. <laughs> But yeah, the complete bull crap, of course. Um, uh, Dakota Fanning, it says here, had to have a stunt belcher because she couldn't do it. I oh yeah, I do it. That's yeah, I would right. need that too. I can't belch on demand. There was a there was a fake belcher in the car, and then there was definitely not Dakota Fanning when you hear her from the window up there <laughs> with like the a piano. Scott teacher. Johnson soundboard in that piano. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That was. Can I say laugh, I don't like that kind of humor? I know, I know. I have, I have, I have, I have shitty taste in humor in movies. I know, but can I just say Mm -hmm. I felt like it hurt the movie. Let me doing that. Okay, but let me ask you this, Donaway. Could this movie have been great if it was one of those that had a lot of comic relief? Like if it, if it had, if there had been a no, a funky funky person in in the mix. I want. I I only want. I only want uh, uh, a very soft humor. Like when he's talking with her, talking about smiling, those very intimate, soft jokes where he needs to uh, be that character. That that was the humor that I appreciated. Anything else feels uh, a little yeah. outrageous and a little too comical. I, I really appreciated how the movie established that uh, the little girl and her dad don't really see eye to eye. She just doesn't right. really like her dad and her mm-hmm. dad, her dad treats her you know, like an employee rather than a daughter. Yeah. And it, it did that really deftly, really quick. And I totally bought it. So then it makes a lot of sense that she desperately wants a father figure yeah. and, and that Creasy comes along and the two of them bond, like yes, it makes a yes. lot of sense, but I'm just like, there was some humor in that as there would be, if you've ever spent any time around a seven year old, there's humor oh, yeah. all the time, but I'm just like, could have been more. Could have been, could have been funnier. Maybe a little bit more. I, I, moments mm-hmm. though that really sold it for me was like when she gave him the the little um, uh, the bear. dandelion. No, the dandelion out there. Oh, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. felt yeah, which that, which wouldn't have still been as fresh uh, five days later, oh, six yeah, days later, point. whenever it was. Yeah. But when he was handing it off to her, it was I have a shot of it. In fact, um, when he's handing it off to her, there's a you know that she knows that that's basically a weed. Like the, nobody looks at a yeah, dandelion. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the <laughs> nobody yeah, that's looks the at that and goes, "Ooh, a the, flower." You pull that out from the field so that yeah. the cows don't give sour milk. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so not, it's yeah. her. It's both a sweet gesture a sweet. and a sardonic, like, "Hey, check out this weed I'm giving you and pretending it's all." You know, it, she yeah. sells that so well True. that I never even question it. And when she gave him the bear, same thing. It was just like a everything that went on between those two felt genuine yeah. and sweet and real, and. The well, whole movie hinges on it. If without gonna, it, it breaks. The whole movie breaks, in my opinion. Whenever you're talking about stuff like that, you're talking about like what what you love in the movie, like what sticks with you. Like that's that was a great shot. That was a great scene. You're talking about stuff that was shot like a movie, like with on film with right. a camera pulled away and a zoom lens and so on. And we don't we haven't even mentioned some of the things where like like the the initial shootout where she gets kidnapped. We mm. we haven't even mentioned it because it's shot so badly. You don't mm-hmm. really understand what's going on and I know that's a style. Style like right. like yeah. we're drawn toward good cinematography and we just don't right. like we're not going to care about your your sequences that are all flickery and qu- quick edits right, and, and so on. Bl- blur. Yeah, exactly. I think the yeah. idea there was to create the, um, what the emotion th- maybe through his eyes of, of the chaos. He's been like, shot. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely all, it's almost all completely shot through his eyes. I mean, yeah, cause, la- cause later on, movie. it's almost all this style throughout the rest of yeah. the film. And that's because yeah. he's in full on fire mode, 
Whereas yeah. prior to this, he hadn't he hadn't I like that fire you know, vision. He hadn't yeah. initiated his rage yet, or whatever you do in D and D as a barbarian. And, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but know? I do like even what they do with the subtitles when it's different, like different levels of duress and uh, and pain. Like obviously, a lot of it's in Franklin Gothic bold. But you know, when he's <laughs> when he's really angry at somebody, it's like an impact, or it's like in this weird blurry version of of. Uh, Franklin Gothic and and it fades out as opposed to just disappearing from the screen. Right, right. right. No, that's, I thought that stuff was cool. Use. Like when he was in the Clever. car torturing that guy and he was asking him questions, some of the subtitles, like he would lean forward and it would eat up the words. Or yeah. Kind of go away. yeah. I, I sometimes, it depends on how this is done, but I thought that stuff was cool. I it can be it. really yeah. distracting if it's not done right. Yeah. Um, you mean like uh, in Fallen? This is like this feels like the, they use the same effect in that movie movie from '98 with uh, Denzel Washington. I think it's called Fallen, where uh, the demon is hopping between people and he's murdering people, and Denzel is a cop. You remember I that movie? I don't remember I don't that. Oh Fallen. yes, this is they, they use a lot of that uh, weird kind Some of cuddly stuff. Oh, little, the cuts, the, the, little, the, the little like cuts, the and the blur, gotcha. and the oh, the that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys it, haven't seen. Oh, I, I, I don't know what well, that is. That it sounds like something oh, we should God, definitely love, have on the list. I love Fallen. That's a great movie. These these techniques, though, in this movie, clearly very music video inspired. Mm-hmm. Yes, like, yes. That's what I felt like I was watching in a, in a yeah. weird way. Um, cool video, and I. Yeah, like Tool, except not black yeah. and white enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tool was always black and white with a guy covered in ashes in the corner all yeah, bald it's always naked. stop motion. Some guy going, he's <laughs> like, oh, he's really spazzing out. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, I used to really like that stuff. I don't know how I, I feel about it now. But but anyway, I just, uh, I, it's a mixed bag for sure. I think it doesn't hold up as well as it could have. Like, this will bug people if they've never seen this movie. I don't blame them. Yeah, yeah. Or if they haven't have seen have. uh like movies from this time period that do this. Yeah. Right? Because right. it's just it's just one of a kind, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. There's um and and a problem for me is that it comes between Training Day and American Gangster mm-hmm. and you might, you know, you might actually find yourself seeing all three movies at some point yeah. and and like so this is a dip in the middle, you know, like the, the freeze frame stuff was very John Woo as well. That's the other thing yeah. that reminded me of, yeah. um, but not the, yeah. the actual over motion and filters and all that. That was just like, I don't know what, I don't know what to compare I, that to. I saw, I saw American Gangster. Yeah. Uh, I like recently, not recently, but like a few years ago, I saw American Gangster and watching this movie yesterday, I spent the whole time going, I wonder what this would look like if Ridley Scott had directed it. Cause mm. Because like we have a good example, like Denzel went and made a Ridley Scott movie a couple of years after Man on Fire, and that's and it has a certain look, and just like I don't know this this movie just it doesn't look like anything, <laughs> like right, I, I can't right. I, you know I can't like place it and say yeah, that looks like movies from something. That's a fair point because Ridley Scott definitely has a signature to his to everything I see of his. You can you can look at a movie and go, I think Ridley Scott directed that, and and you might be right. Whereas with Tony Scott, I think that's harder to do. Mm-hmm. Like he was really good at when he was in the medium he was in, but you you know, there's nothing about Top Gun where you go, well, that's a Ridley Scott film. You only know it because he did it. It could be anybody else, right? And mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing. I mean, a lot of directors like are like that. I was I was watching an, a review of that new uh, Gran Turismo thing, yeah, and oh, I forgot yeah. entirely that. That thing's directed by Neil Blomkamp, who's District 9 director. And as far as I'm concerned, District 9 is one of the most revelatory science fiction films ever made. And this is just kind of nothing. Well, so, but, and District 9 looks like Chappie and it looks like Elysium, yeah. right? So, like, because the director and a cinematographer are doing a lot of the same stuff. Right. Reach, but then you see this and you just you see Gran Turismo and you go, uh, that could have been anyone. Doesn't matter who did it. Just. And I'm sure, you know, whatever, they're paying the bills is what I, this is what directors do if they aren't getting huge jobs. They, they do small stuff, you know, like I don't think uh matchstick men looks like a typical Ridley Scott film, even though mm-hmm. it's him. Not at all. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. uh, and that's not a bad movie by any stretch. I don't mean that. No, but. no. It's what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Do you think, do you think matchstick men was like, uh, uh, did it come out before Man on Fire? Is that kind of, how that uh, works? no, that was later. No? I thought. Okay. I can't remember when that came just, out. Just checking if you had a theme. When, when did, what was the movie that Ridley Scott did that was, 
that Ridley Scott did with with um, Denzel. I don't remember it, Randy. You mentioned that a second American ago. Gangster. And, oh, I love uh, that movie. Yeah, he's uh, he starts in Louisiana, ends up in Harlem, and he's just he inherits a mafia that's importing heroin from like Vietnam. Yeah, Russell Crowe's like the yeah the cop or a reporter or and something. There's, there's a scene early in that movie, like it's an all star cast, and one of the bit roles is Idris Elba. Yeah like a bit you blink and you miss him roll. Yeah. And uh, the reason you you blink and miss him is because like he uh he's on the street and Denzel Washington is sitting in a cafe talking to some people about family and how important it is that you always do the right thing by your family. And he sees Idris Elba on the street outside and he goes outside and like says five words and shoots him in the head. <laughs> it's like it's like oh my god this and and the way Ridley wow. Scott directs like you see all of that really clearly. Yeah. Everything mm-hmm. that he does. That movie's you know? great. Mm-hmm. What a great movie. Look at this. Ch- uh, Chitta Eld El Jadafor is in it. He's yeah, in yeah. He nailed it. <laughs> chitta, 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 bang, chitta, bang, 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 bang. Ted Levine, Josh Brolin, uh, Levine. Uh, John Hawks, Levine. Sorry, I love that guy. <laughs> Uh, uh, Ruben Santiago Hudson's awesome. He's good in everything. Cuba Gooding Jr.'s got a small role. Is that as a great movie, dude? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm and, and and I I like if Man on Fire left a bad taste in your mouth, and I'm not I'm not trying to put it down. I'm just saying like it's 39 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. There's people out there who don't like this movie. Yeah. If it left a bad taste in your mouth and you haven't seen American Gangster, go watch American Gangster. Yeah. It will fix all. It's the stuff. so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn it, you're making me want to watch that, right? <laughs> Uh, let's see what else. Um, oh, what grossed me out? Let's play this. Gross. Oh, what do you think yeah. grossed Scott out today? I, I wrote down two. Um, wiping uh, the sweat off of the forehead of the guy in the club when he's got the uh, shotgun <laughs> point at him, and he's like using his arm, yeah, his right. uncovered arm, to wipe the sweat off the forehead of that guy. He Top does three. That a lot. Even That's, with the yeah. with the duct tape, he uh, yeah, he does with the duct tape, the, he wipes the yeah. sweat, which won't which won't do anything. If yeah, anything, nothing. that just makes it. Dick. Gross. Yeah. Um, or uh, there's a point where uh, Christopher Walken licks his fingers while he's eating something. Nice. And I thought either of it. those moments would have been on your list. That's got to be it. No, that wasn't for me, it. For, oh, for go me, ahead. There Randy. was there was something gross in the scene, the first bit of revenge. So Denzel is in the back seat of the broken car that gets uncovered, and then he's, he's got the the henchman. Yeah, and he takes him to like a a, a, a it's like he takes him to a a hilltop uh, junkyard. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, so, yeah. That's so weird. Sometimes when it's movies are yeah. go to a, go to a place where you spend the entire scene going, "What the hell is this place? <laughs> How does this exist?" Yeah, that anyway, was a weird place. I agree. Anyway, he's in the front seat of this car that's with the windows up, and you're like, you just know it's like hot and sweaty, and they're both <sighs> bleeding, and <laughs> like, and then the guy, the guy is like, "Can you give me a cigarette?" And mm. I, I like. I'm about to kill you. I wouldn't waste a cigarette on you. This yeah. is so weird. And Denzel's like touching his mouth. No, just, no I, air filtration. This You're is right. Just gross. You're right. That was gross. I would put that top three. Uh, so so far, you guys have gotten three and two. I'll say those are ex- oh, interchangeable. Wow. Okay. But number one's a much simpler thing. Dunaway, do you want to take a crack at it? Oh man, I was just so oh, uh, d- d- <laughs> swimming in a pool fully clothed. I nope. mean, that just seems like something you'd be like, ah, I don't like it. I wouldn't ah. like it either, but it wouldn't gross me out. But I would not like it. You're right, right about that. Um, the number one thing for me was them sucking on every finger at the barbecue, just every oh, finger. Yeah, oh, yeah. Was, and I know some. Close, I know that some people close. love yeah. to suck juice and shit off their fingers at f- food events, right. all that. I'm not throwing shade at you. I'm just saying for me. It is one of the foulest things you can do is sit there and lick your fingers. Oh, oh my gosh. Can't do that's it. That's and 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 his his hands in particular. <laughs> Why is <And> that? <laughs> well, it leads me to I need a trope alert. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Let me get here. This movie has a noodle incident. If you don't know what a noodle <laughs> incident is, it is a, a a fact about a character that will not be explained. It is something that happened in the past, and people might ask, "Hey, what what's your deal with noodles?" Oh, and they would, "Oh, hands. don't even ask me about that." Yeah. And in this case, the scars all over uh, Creasy's hands go completely unexplained. And uh, f- without a doubt, you probably come up with a worse explanation for them than right. <laughs> would actually have been portrayed if it had been. I think portrayed. it was a it was a previous uh, bomb b- bum insertion that went wrong. <laughs> exactly, because <laughs> you got to practice uh, at that. You can't just do that one time. You know, it was explained in the book apparently because in in a book you have to explain such things. It, you can't just say he's got 
scars. Like you have to explain why they're shaped the way they are or whatever. Mm. Um, and apparently in the book, in the past, he had been captured like in Vietnam or something. He had been captured and was being interrogated with his hands on top of a table. And the interrogators were putting out cigarettes in the oh, backs of his hands. That's what it kind of looked like. Yeah. Little yeah. circle burns. Nobody wants circle, circle burns. burns. But- but like mm-hmm. their uh, tropes aren't always bad. It was way better not explained, in my opinion. Oh, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Like MacGuffin yeah. I could deal with. You know, you just yeah, knew they, it was they, bad. They you, they explained a little bit. They talked about uh, when they were when they were investigating him at the well, I, I guess the for the newspaper or whatever. They were talking about what he was, the assassin, and that kind of stuff. So we kind of got some backstory, but we didn't need any more than that. No, it was fine. In fact, the movie's already two and a half hours, and I didn't feel it doesn't feel long to me. This this movie no. goes right past mm-hmm. real fast for me. But I don't think they needed to spend too much time. In fact, there's a whole quote from, I didn't write it down, but a quote from from Tony Scott who said that they had a ton of dialogue between him and Christopher Walken yeah. about their life previous all, to all of this. That'd be awesome. And he went, you know what? Why are we doing this? We don't need any of this. All of this is intuited yeah. that they're these old friends with these these old connections. They've seen some dark shit in their lives, but they're in a different place now. And that's all you need. And, yeah. and I think he's right. I don't need it over explained. I wouldn't mind exploring it, but it's a different movie. Well, know? yeah, the, the trope of the character is the retired badass, right? Mm-hmm. And we love that. I mean, just, I'm speaking for all audiences everywhere all the time. We yeah. love the retired badass. Yeah. There yeah. are hundreds of movies. Just one more that. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, you could say that about almost, oh man, everything's a retired badass, isn't it? Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a lot. lot of, there's, there's a lot, lot of, of it. badass. It's not all, yeah, it's, but it's a lot. Yeah. Even the uh, Equalizer, yeah. Even the new Top Gun. It's, it's, he's not retired, but it's about it's those themes. You yeah. know, it's like, well, I'm aged out of being good at riding this, driving or driving, <laughs> flying this jet. <laughs> I'm out here driving this jet. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, hey, what do you do for hey, I'm a jet boomer. driver. I'm a jet right. driver. Yeah. What do you That's do? That's not what we do. I love oh my, my gosh. My favorite example of this for some reason is Bubba Hotep. Because oh. because we have both Elvis and JFK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we don't know. Maybe <laughs> not for sure. Like, Dude, you that might movie. have a retired badass Elvis in the mix. I love that movie <laughs> way more than it deserves. I really oh, yeah. like that movie a lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all that being said, let's do some clips. We got clips here to do, and uh, we're gonna do them. All right. That's the Wait, commitment. We're we gonna do clips. Yeah, yeah. If we do clips, yeah. then we do them. That's the rule. Okay. I'm gonna start with this one. Breathe some air. Breathe some air. Breathe some air. Breathe, Breathe some, some air. air. Yeah. It's free. Taste it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's this one. Oh, I wrote she's very good in this. Uh, speaking of Dakota Fanning. My last bodyguard left. Someone gave him more money than we could. I guess that makes me a bargain then, huh? Being black. Is that a positive or negative for a bodyguard in Mexico? Time will tell. There were 24 kidnappings in Mexico City in the last six days. Four a day. Yeah? Yes. 24? 24. What do you think about that, Chris? I think that you know entirely more than you should. Mm, well, thank you. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> that last bit. They're so good. Damn it, oh, she's good. Man. Give her... Yeah. Why? Okay. I don't understand this. Her and her sister. Why aren't they always up for shit? Yeah, by, right. by, by that, yeah. I mean like awards. Why am I not constantly hearing... I guess she was nominated for the great uh, L was, but why, why are we not like, Oh yeah, this new prestigious, uh, you know, Christopher Nolan film with this incredible performance mm-hmm. by Dakota. Well, what happened there? Why aren't we doing that? She, it's a good did question. Did she not get nomination for, um, little miss sunshine? Uh, was she in that? Oh no, that's Bre- That's not, uh, not- Br- Abigail Breslin or whatever her name is. Oh girl. shit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was Dakota Fanning. Yeah. Different girl. Different it's, girl. It's wow. real hard for a kid to get, uh, like an award like that. Um, but, and then once they get into adulthood, um, I, I think it's not, maybe it's not, it, there's still great actors when they get to adulthood, but there's something special about someone who blooms early. It could do mm-hmm. it when they're, when they're mm-hmm. super young. Mm-hmm. And does that translate into, you know, becoming even greater as they get older? Not necessarily. They not just necessarily, just but I, I've, I've yet to see her do anything, even in her adulthood, anything crappy. Like, I feel like she's as yeah. good as anyone working. I don't know. Solid. Well, yeah. Do, do solid later. actors get awards or is it the ones that well, I don't but, know? But a, a lot of actors really come into their own in their thirties and forties. There's a, they got a ways to go. It's, yeah. It's fine. I mean, let's, you can, you can like or not like Leonardo DiCaprio, but he did some pretty amazing things 
and never got recognized for a very long time. I like that you had a uh, proviso there. Leonardo. Do people not yeah. like yeah. him? I like him just fine. Is he, is yeah. He, yeah. Oh, wait, but no, well, people get mad well, at him because of he know. only dates twenty three and yeah, yeah, younger. Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, trust me, there's oh. plenty of DiCaprio haters. Out I didn't there. realize that was a thing. Well, his, I mean, I knew that was his, a thing, uh, but you know. his tw- his tw- uh, Twitter profile profile is twenty three and me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Please tell me that's the joke, first that man. you should patent that joke. That's really good. I should patent. Yeah. I'll patent it right now. He'll and not it. once is he. And not once has he rebuffed that that statement about no, that. No. And not once has he even like he gave a shit. Whatever. Yeah. Y'all guys just hating. Whatever. About his way. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's a birth defect thing. What? Anyway, here it is. It's birth defect. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> oh yeah, it's hand thing. He was trying to explain it. Yeah. It yeah. Uh, the gunshot holds no fear. The gun- I think that was cool because it had double meaning. It yeah. was like for her and her swimming, but then later it, it kind of had meta- metaphor. I'm not even sure what the metaphor was, but it felt like it had metaphorical qualities. Well, I mean, when she was, when she was, uh, she didn't freeze up when she was being kidnapped. That was part of it. Oh, cause the gun training. went off and she reacted yeah. and la- yeah, ran. That's right. Yeah. I have two, I have two problems with that scene. Love I have that. two like real serious problems and I'm kind of uh, angered by it. Oh. Uh, number one, why are you rubbing the bricks together? Oh, I, I love that. I loved rubbing the bricks together, though. I, it was such a stupid time, thing. I'm, I am on edge. My hair is standing yes. up. That's probably why. That's yes. probably why, right? Because yeah. it's like there's going to be the excitement at the swim meet. You're going to be like anxious. And that's what the bricks cause. Okay. Yeah. We're, What's we're your paying, other complaint? We're man? paying you to serve me. And I'm telling you, stop rubbing those bricks together. Number two. <laughs> number two. When you clack the bricks together, you, yeah. if, if you do it right behind my head, I am going to murder you. Mm. It was it was so wrong of him to make that seriously loud noise right behind her her head. I just felt like he was I oh I hated it so much. It did feel a little like a, a little bit of bullying, but you also can understand it because you know certainly uh, if, if you know he's a professional, he's also mm-hmm. everything. He like. He drives to mom places. I'm like, oh, this bodyguard yeah. job has really got some feature creep, man. Yeah, he was he's like, oh, <laughs> Lord. He's, he's a swim instructor? What did this? Yeah, like, yeah. This, like, we're not going to explain that. He was mm-hmm. underpaid. I'll just say it. Oh, absolutely. He was underpaid. Well, he was a drunk to start with, but he straightened up. He's yeah, straightened but up. I mean, I guess it's his own fault. It's like getting a job and then yeah. doing too much. Yeah, it's your own yeah. fault. Like, you know, don't come yeah, in before yeah. nine or <laughs> don't right. stay after six or whatever. Right? He was he was he was <laughs> self-imposed. Uh, by the way, right, uh, yeah. right, right in the middle of all of that part of the movie is a trope of, uh, hey, you up the the midnight phone call. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and I just like for some reason, I just loved that little sequence. Like I very don't genuine. Under- yeah. I But I like I don't I've never gotten that phone call. I've had a lot of really, really? good friends. And yeah. I've never had one get drunk and call me at two in the morning. Just really? I haven't had that either. I've never had that. Oh, really? No. Well, you guys need some new friends. <laughs> or maybe so. I need some new friends. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe you that, <laughs> that's uh, got friend issues. But but yeah, I don't, I'm trying to think if I've ever had anybody. I mean, I've had family call me about stuff like, oh, uncle so-and-so Ooh, just got taken emergency to the ER. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I've never had yeah. anybody call like, and just go. Like that. It was so important because it establishes that actually Christopher Walken's probably a good guy here. Yeah. And, uh, and it establishes it because Creasy trusts him so much that he reaches out to him when he's feeling bad, like yeah. even if it's 2 a.m. And I just like, I like the whole thing, everything about it, I really, really, really like. Mm. Um, but just, I would have had my ringer off. That's all I'm saying. I'm yeah, I would never. But you don't have, you don't have like six uh, Nokia phones on your side table. Like, <laughs> yeah, you might have five year rings off. But, yeah, uh, yeah. When you called that <laughs> his, his, his uh, Nokia okay. collection in your intro, about pissed myself just sitting here. Yeah. Too good. <laughs> Um, I he, uh, I was going to say one other thing about that. What was it? It was, I was going to say that, oh, there is a, I like the, it's tropey, but I like the bit where later he's describing to the police in the questioning, walking, sitting there and he says, he's going to kill everybody and you, you don't have enough power to stop. Like that whole idea of my friend is bigger than any war you throw at him. And he, yeah. and he has to tell us that. So the audience hears just how, how on fire this man is, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. I love that. I love that whole trope. That happens in a lot of stuff, including Wick and who knows what else. Uh, yeah, all right. uh, life yeah. man. I like the point is is always a good one. Like you, you should have a hype man in a movie. Yeah, yeah. he is like a, yeah. That's yeah. a great word for it. He is the hype man. We the we the audience need that. 
I just feel like the hype man doesn't need to be sidelined so much. Like we just watched the newer Walking Tall, right? Yeah. And uh, like, wait, do you call it Walking Tall? Walking, Christopher Walking, walking Tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Johnny Knoxville is <laughs> is definitely a, a hype man in that movie, but he's also the comic relief, and he's also all these other things. <laughs> yeah. And it's just right. like I just wanted more Christopher Walken, please. Yeah. 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 He's great. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to see him be Emperor and Dune. Dune Part Two. Can't wait. Can't it's wait. Gonna be, it's going to be weird. Uh, let's see. They are really great together, I wrote. Do you have a girlfriend, Creasy? What? Do you have a girlfriend? No. What kind of question is that anyway? You're supposed to be studying history, okay? That is history. Creasy history. No, that's ancient history. No more questions. What Who else? Who was your very first girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that kind of chemistry since uh, uh, Macaulay Culkin and Uncle Buck. Yeah. When, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> breakfast. Fast. Right, yeah. the fast thing. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. I thought right. that was his brother, Karen Culkin, no? Was that Macaulay Culkin? No, that was Macaulay, that was Macaulay yeah. and Uncle Buck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I mean, Karen Culkin's ruined me. No, it's Abigail Breslin. <laughs> no, it's Abigail Breslin. <laughs> Karen, ever since Karen Culkin did that thing to the window in uh, Succession, oh, it's hard, hard. Yeah. yeah, it's hard for me since then. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him in uh, season two of Fargo. Anyway, moving on. Walking and yelling. I'm in love. I'm in love. <laughs> that made me feel very uncomfortable. That whole yeah. scene, yeah. very yeah. uncomfortable. Old buddy's talking about st- stuff. Uh, here's your belch scene. Can you belch? And then she goes, uh. "Yeah, it's not her though." Yeah. Stunt, stunt, stunt belching, stunt, yeah, stunt belcher. Yeah, uh, it's um, done killing. I'm done killing. No, well, yeah, you are, but your friend there isn't. Yeah. Uh, vengeance time. What are you gonna do? What I do best. I'm gonna kill him. Anyone I was involved, anybody who profited from it, anybody who opens their eyes at me. You kill them all. Kill them all. <laughs> that little that little mis- music in the background. Oh, yeah. Bow, 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 yeah. Bow. yeah. It gets it's real good. Later, it starts going. Gung, 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 gung. <laughs> <laughs> the music in this movie. We, we, I'll touch on it again. Music in this movie. Uh, not its strong suit. I so thought it was okay. a fine. It's, yeah, it's fine. okay. That's how I felt. Mm-hmm. There were moments, okay. I, I, but I agree. It's not like crucial. I do um, like the use of uh, Blue Bayou by. Um, oh, yeah. Um, that was. They oh, yeah, used that a was lot, a, but it was good. That was a fun little theme throughout the whole deal. It was. Yeah. yeah. Um, didn't. Wasn't there something recent where she got like all kinds of exposure? What was it? Some some movie or TV show where huh. Linda Ronstadt's they, music they played like a music. huge part. Um to the point of like it sold a ton of records the next day in real life. I mean, mm-hmm. people saw it and then like, oh, I know what it was. Episodes of um, uh, the, the Last of Us. Uh, they had a whole oh, Linda Ronstadt yes, thing. The, um, right, that? the romantic episode with uh, Ron Swanson and. Um, That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. thing ended up being, that ended up, she sold like a million records the next yeah. week or something. Yeah. It's crazy. I didn't ever even heard that song. <laughs> <laughs> prior to that show. Mm-hmm. All right, here's a weird text line on screen thing. Oh, yeah. So they did this little weird transition to say, meanwhile, at the police station. Yeah. yeah. And they had, yeah. I don't know why they had to do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. Some of that stuff was too much. Uh, you're making me nervous. You're making me fucking nervous. I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? You're making me, like you're making me effing nervous. <laughs> Uh, great line about art and death. Creasy's art is death. He's about to paint his masterpiece. See, that's that whole thing. Yeah. Whole, like, oh, you don't even know what what bag of shit you've opened with Creasy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Are we supposed to think, you know, sometimes the main character's name is like similar to another word. So you're like thinking, oh, like Reacher or whatever. Um, do you think we're supposed to think crazy? Or greasy. Oh, for, uh, um, greasy, greasy. <laughs> in that, in the greasy. heat in Mexico, in, in a car full of smoke, blood, and sweat, greasy. Yeah, greasy. I'm going with greasy. Okay. Yeah, right, fair greasy. enough. Yeah, good point. <laughs> I kept saying greasy by accident, so I'm sure yeah. everyone else did. I like how uh, Walken called him crease. Yeah, uh, crease. Yeah, you got crease. time for no ease. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> His job is to arrange a meeting. Says this clip. Forgiveness is between them and God. It's my job to arrange the meeting. I like that. It's a good line. So, yeah, I love that. Here he is making papa noises. There you go. That was him getting ready to shoot the uh, the missile out of the window. Pup, 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 pup. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did like the old couple. 
who were having to wait around for that shit. Oh yeah, that right? was a Those funny. Were, that was a funny great. thing. Well, in fact, yeah. he's the one that talked about the meeting. I think too. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's oh, the, the, we heard this. They tuck it up their rectum. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn near, damn near funny. killed him. He gets so medical with that. Like you yeah. instead of saying, "Yeah, I've taken this thing and I've shoved it up your butt, shove it up your ass, put it right in your butthole up there." That's what I did. I've the lower part of your colon. You're my, welcome. My rewatch of Sopranos doesn't help because they are. That's what they say. They're always like, "I'm going to stick this gun right up your ass," like that. <laughs> and in this one, he's yeah. like, "I'm going to place it in your rectum and uh, plus press the button." <laughs> All right, he's listening. I wrote, "I'm listening." I'm listening. I'm listening. He says it three times. He does. I <laughs> yeah. am listening. Two Why more would times. Why you call and not speak? If you're, like if you're, if you, when you call someone, you're ready to speak. It is weird, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I think if you, uh, if you say you're listening three times, it's fine. If you say it five times, bees come out of your mouth. So you got to be careful. <laughs> can uh, can someone? Yeah. I, I need help here. I'm I because like you're you're clearly not playing any Mickey Rourke because there wasn't any, and <laughs> and I. I desperately want to go sit and watch a movie where Mickey Rourke talks a lot. Yeah. And I'm just okay. curious. Can anyone name one? Uh, yeah. Angel um, Heart. The r- Angel my favorite, Heart. One of my favorite horror movies of all time. He does a lot of tucking in Angel Heart. Is that Heart. The, the shotgun yeah. and the groin deal? Jeez Louise. Yes. It's like. <laughs> naked, <laughs> naked Lisa Bonet is the only thing Scott knows about that movie. Yeah. Exactly. How yeah. can you hear anything after that? I can't. Like, I actually yeah. want to challenge Scott right now without looking anything up, Scott. Yeah. Who is the other. <laughs> super famous actor in that movie besides Mickey Rourke. Uh, so Mickey Rourke, Lisa Bonet, and, and uh, one of the most famous actors of all time. <laughs> oh, um, uh, Robert De Niro's in that, isn't Thank he? You. Okay, there you go. Okay, okay yeah, good. We're yeah. good. Yeah. I kind of remember him in there, sort of. Yeah, but the shotgun me, you know. and the crotch, that's what I remember the most. <laughs> okay. um, that's, so, thank you for thank you for that. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will have to watch it alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, just like Man on Fire, my, my wife yeah. sat and watched dutifully the first third of the movie. Right. And then and when uh, Danger Close Danger Clo- was closing in on a little girl, she was like, "I'm done." Mm, yeah, yeah. So yeah. D- it's hard to watch. We have seen Tina has problems with viol- just like overall violence. She won't see any John Wick movies just because the violence is so yeah. excessive. So those I have to watch solo. So those feel like cartoony violence to me. But I guess I, I get it. They it's like do, nonstop yeah. gunshots to the head and face. No, and, cartoony yeah. violence is R R R. Oh yeah, right. Netflix. Cartoony that's, violence is not a guy getting violence. his fingers chopped off and blood skirting on the on the windshield and then getting it cauterized. That's not cartoony yeah. violence. Is it? Did we do Angel Heart? We did. We did. Uh, 2016. Yeah. Okay, I couldn't remember if we did. Yeah. Uh, finally, this clip. This is, oh, when you're sure it was the Berenstein Bears, or Uh-oh. Stein, or whatever, <laughs> but you want yeah. confirmation, Same. this is what you do. You tell her to tell you to tell me what she called her bear. There you go. <laughs> what she calls her bear. Her bear. Her bear. Cre- creasy bear. If there bear. was a little bit of a language barrier, wouldn't you say that in Spanish? I just, I, I like felt like, mm. yeah. is it what, called her what? What and, is she? What yeah, is she, and he was we? very, he was very fluent, so you'd think he would, but they were all over the place with the language stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was never sure if they were going, they were doing that because they, you know, on some shows and TV shows or whatever, uh, I started watching that Warrior thing because I think Ibit recommended it, uh, the series Warrior, the. Ch- Chinese mafia stuff and no, well that one was not me. <laughs> Who was that? For- Some someone recommended that. I can't remember. HBO thing. Anyway, it's a period piece set in like the turn of the century, uh, San Francisco, Chinatown stuff. Anyway, they they get off the boat and everyone's doing subtitle Chinese until the camera does this this weird slow motion loop around a room. They're all talking and then from then on, everyone just talks in English. Doesn't even affect an mm-hmm. accent. They're just. I feel um, like we saw that on Film Sack. We saw that exact mo- movement. I, we saw that recently with a movie, and the movie was... And the movie was... Someone went to Japan. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Yes, and as they, as the camera pans around... Underworld? Was it Underworld? <laughs> oh. Uh, if they're speaking a language, and then they kind of pan around, and as as they pass behind somebody's head the language changes and you're not seeing subtitles you're hearing you're hearing english were they speaking vampire or i think it was uh but it was russian <laughs> it was russian oh, this is, this so is familiar to me i'm having a major black rain? Rain? Black we've rain. seen too much we've seen too much black this rain the problem Black rain. black rain, black rain black rain oh yeah it's totally black rain what was that like 10 years ago now what are you talking when about did we do rain? black rain we did black rain like 12 movies ago or yeah 13 14 movies ago right before cocaine bear Oh, right. right. April yeah. is April. Yakuza. Yeah. That's it. That's it. 
That's what we saw. Rain. You're totally dead on, dude. That's it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Warrior does the same thing. Is the point? <laughs> this this um, summer. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> yeah. This summer has been so brutal. This like it. This summer has filled our brains with stuff that we're already forgetting. April. Uh, I know, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't like 2023. Yeah. Is weird. I don't. I, I love it and hate it. It's a weird year. It's something about it. Yeah. Um, hey, just a, just a follow up question. Um, for my Rick, Mickey Rourke fix, anybody want to suggest Sin City? Oh, I'd do that. Oh. Sure. You want to suggest? I mean, you I'd... haven't watched it. Are you saying what are you? I have seen oh. it. I'm just like I'm trying oh. to get a Sack particular good. thing. I mean, do you get? Uh, is there a lot of? Uh, a does Mickey Rourke talk a lot in that? Because it's really just the <laughs> he talks like, a pretty good bit the story in the where he's trying to find um, what Jamie King right is the one. Right. Where he's... Yeah, I think he talks. Oh, a no, lot no, no, no. He's the he's the um, he's the big brutish guy. He's the big brutish guy with the with the band aids on his face and stuff. Yeah, I uh, can't think of his name. There's a couple of scenes, pretty big scenes in Expendables that he just goes on and yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. He just sits yeah. and talks to. I think Slot. we did. We did that one though, didn't we? The first yeah, one. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that new one's coming out. You know. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I will stop derailing. We have a we have a time commitment. Here. I hear the new. Oh, that's by, right. By the way, I hear the new Expendables is R like hard R. That's what I heard. Hard R. Yeah, they've Good. been PG thirteen. Hard R. They've been PG thirteen up till now, so I don't know what to expect from that. Death, anyway, mayhem. Maybe some actual blood. I don't know. Right. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get to, uh, that was the last of those. So here comes these. It's the film sack checklist. Unusually subdued Christopher Walken performance. Yeah. Check. Yeah. The ghost of John Woo haunts the film. Check. Oh, true. Did Wick before Wick was Wick? Check. Oh, Wick. Pre-Wick. It's Pre-Wick. Pre-Wick, Pre-Wick is, is correct. Uh, let's get to the Star Trek connections. Uh, gotta be somebody here, right? Not really. Um, at least none of the <laughs> cast. Um, no. I was actually surprised that none of the cast, like Giancarlo Giannini, had ever been in Star Trek. So mm. I just, I plucked out two that I found kind of interesting. Um, one is a stunt guy named Chuck P- Picerni Jr. So Chuck Picerni Jr. did some stunts in this movie. Also did stunts in Star Trek 3 and 4, which just seem old i'm like is chuck <laughs> Pacerny jr an old man must doing be the stunts senior now movie? must be right yeah they need old guys for stunts was sure. he the belcher though <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> stunt belcher yeah maybe his stunts weren't very uh taxing mm. right um the, the other one i noticed was f hudson miller who is our supervising sound editor this movie had pretty good sound editing in my opinion why does dakota uh, fanny feel like she's been in some kind of star trek thing why am i she hasn't that? That's um, F, like weird. This F Hudson Miller fellow, F Hudson did, Miller, yep. uh, did, was also the supervising sound editor for Star Trek VI: The Undiscovered Country. And guess what else? Hmm. Bad Boys Two, Pearl Harbor, Gone <gasps> in sixty seconds, Enemy oh, of the wow. State, Armageddon, That's The Rock, Patriot Games. Apparently, this guy has done sound editing on an enormous percentage yeah. of film sec movies. Yeah, <laughs> and this whole era we're talking about these kinds yeah. of action movies. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, nice. Let's do a soundtrack grade. I'll give it a G for great mix of things. I thought it was fine. It's fine. Yeah, fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I got really tired of Claire de Lune. Why do we keep playing Claire de Lune? Mm, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. It was, it was exhausting. I've been there like six bling, bling, times. Bling, bling. That reminded me of what his brother bling, bling, bling. did with. Um, oh, shit. What's it Continue called? With it. Uh, the, 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 the Black Hawk Down movie. <laughs> Please, would somebody join me in being, in being tired of that song? I love that song. No, it makes me think of uh, the end of Ocean's Eleven when they're all standing in front of the Bellagio fountains. And... Or or The Martian or Shrek. Yeah. It's in Shrek. Yeah. Oh. I was in Shrek. I never did. Shrek has everything. Shrek, but... Oh, I, have no, I have no complaints about it Shrek yet. is basically just a giant music video. <laughs> Give it a bit three or four more movies with it, and then maybe yeah, I'll join exactly. the team. It's, it hasn't reached Wilhelm scream levels of hate yeah. for me yeah. yet. Yeah, and it's not quite a hallelujah, that one version. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. Come on, or, or any version. Any really. version, really. <laughs> yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, it's not as yeah. bad as we built this city. We can all agree. All right, let's move Ooh, on. yes, correct. Let's do the uh, Twitter post or what we call now the social media post because F Twitter. Uh, let's sum <laughs> this thing up in 280 characters or less, though, and I think this week it'd be best if we started with Randy. Matt on fire. Denzel Washington's acting is fine. Why's every house got a Catholic shrine? Husband mm-hmm. was still full of nothing but lies. If Creasy'd kiss that lady, no big surprise. And why are the real payoffs always off screen? It would have been nice for more to have been seen. This all should have felt more like Predator. If only they'd had a goddamn editor. <laughs> uh, oh, good job. That was a strong finish. Very like good. That. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Brian Dunaway, your turn. 
No rhymes, man on fire. Mm. Like a little Jack Daniels for sleeping, a little Jack Daniels for waking up, a little Jack Daniels for driving, and a little Jack Daniels to free this bird. Hashtag free bird. Hashtag no liars. Hashtag cause this man is flammable and on fire. <laughs> <laughs> flammable and on fire. I like that. Yeah. Hey, Brian Nibbit, round us out. Man on fire. I'm going back someday, come what may, to Chicago, as well as Franklin Gothic Bold and Impact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Yeah, you saw that, did you? I didn't yeah, know. the Chicago for the uh, timer yes. font with the, yeah. I'm all, I just wanna, I'm, when, our, when our typography comes into play in life, yeah. I'm always happy yeah. about that. Oh, it's my superpower. Yeah. That's never, ever going to be of use for anything. Nope. And I just, just want to yeah. go back to this point I'm really trying to make that I didn't bring up yet because of my post. Um, there's something about the movie Predator that I feel like Tony Scott should have learned from. Uh, mm -hmm. like what John McTiernan does in that movie is he uses what you see, how you see characters looking mm. and how like they're scared and you see them moving and doing things. It's just like, I don't understand why this movie wasn't shot more like predator. Pre like right. it would have been fantastic if I had been, I don't know, like nervous about him succeeding in his mission. I never felt right, nervous right. at all. Mm. That, you know, the entire, that's sort of the movie. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Well, Cause I mean, there's lots of times he's walking around bleeding. I was, I was just like, okay, I guess he's just never going to die. Okay. Yeah. Check. When that shot to the chest and he's not really reacting, I just went, okay, we, is there a supernatural element to mm -hmm. this? Like what are right. we doing here? Yeah. Uh, nicely done. Let's get to the, uh, where, what do I usually do after this? Oh, I do. <laughs> I do. What do uh, I usually do next. Anybody oh, know? Oh, I know. Uh, t t alternate titles, everyone. Look at these. Yes. Uh, camera pan on fire. <laughs> the thing was all over the place. <laughs> or old Harry Paco has an ass full of C4. Oh, oh what do we got? Oh, sorry, my wife just showed up with food when I brought up a butt Boom. full of bomb. Butt bomb. Thanks, honey. Butt bomb. Mm. Butt bomb. I'll, I'll need that after yesterday. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. Let's uh, get to this here uh, email. Actually, it's a voicemail. I love these voicemails. These are great. They keep sending these in. 801-471-0462. We got a call about Prada. Uh, or the Devil Wears Prada, oh, and that we should see it if we haven't. Here you go. Uh, I was just calling you guys regarding uh, the Devil Wears Prada. This is Jeannie Soros. Uh, Jeannie. Uh, oh. um, anyway, I uh, just kind of wanted to call and, and say that I'm, I'm with Scott in that when I don't see a movie that people insist that everybody sees, I start to resist wanting to see it at all. Yeah. And uh, Devil Wears Prada was one of those movies. I did watch it a couple of years ago, and it was much better than I thought it was going to be. It's not something that you should see, but I think that you would uh, you would all probably enjoy it. And Scott, I think you would enjoy watching it with Kim. Um, Take, take of that okay. what you will. Have a great day. Is Bye. It, have you guys all seen it? I've never seen it. I have not, not seen Devil's Never Wars, seen Wars it. Prada. I nope. assumed it was I, for the ladies. I have and not seen for me. it and I love it. And yeah. I always want to ask the resident contrarian, Brian Dunaway, uh -huh. does, <laughs> do you, do you have that same thing where you like, if, if people start really telling you to see right. something, you're just not going to do it. Believe it or not. No, I'm not like that. If someone Good, says yeah. you should really watch something, I'll watch it. I may not watch it right away. But it's on my list. I hear you. It's like, oh, I hear you. For me, it's weird. Yeah, it's like I movies it's are different than TV shows. Like I, I've re here recently just barreled through things that that um, Ibbitt in particular has recommended mm -hmm. on recommendals because when he talked about it, I went, ooh, that sounds like me. And I watched it immediately. But when people, I do have this thing when people want to get movies down my throat, even though it represents mm -hmm. less than the 12 hours I spent on the 12 episode season I just watched, it's only going to take me two or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm weirdly resistant. It's not that I don't want to see it or it's not the people telling me. It's just, I don't know what well, it is. I can't also, explain it. It's weird. You also have film sack and film sack takes up a, a pretty big chunk of every week mm -hmm. of your that, life. That's right? true. Yeah. 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 It takes, these not only take time, but they take, you know, mental energy and we yeah. capturing clips from it and thinking about all the ins and outs. I'm not just enjoying a film. Mm -hmm. So I think that maybe is part of it, but I also will, maybe that's why I like to slip in documentaries in the meantime. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where do you slip them in? Uh, nah, I'm out there with your bum. <laughs> Get Vince Wash to come over with his gloves. Yeah, he could put it up my bum. <laughs> uh, Here's another documentary. Now tell me, Rick. Now tell me right now. <laughs> what are you going to watch, Parasite? Tell that's me. right. We also got another text from a dude named Arborist Andrew. Oh, uh, same line, Arborist. same phone number. Just used it as a text line, and he says this: "I have a question about 65 
Kylo Ren had a picture of his child on the console of his spacecraft as it crashed rather than a family photo with his child and his wife. Is it normal that when you have a kid, that child becomes more important to you than anything else, even your wife? Or is this a movie trope? I'm married, I, and I have thought of, or I have thought about having children, but I can't imagine anything in this world being more important than my wife. I'm sure you all have a different viewpoint, given right. that you are all, all parents. Love yeah, what you so do, Arborist Andrew. I, I don't think it's a either or. It's a. Uh, I can tell you right now, um, when my kids were little, and I could do backgrounds on computers or phones. My kids, I would have put my kids on those, and my wife's not on that. Mm -hmm. If, Mm -hmm. like, now I'm looking at it now, I got Van and Phoebe on there. That's not even one of my kids. There's a cool function, by the way, the iPhones and and other phones. Android's probably had this for a while, but you can uh, set it so that every hour it changes your background, pulls from a different uh, favorite um, photo. Favorite photo, yeah, or or from a collection of like, okay, all my Tina photos, all my Tristan photos, and all my pet photos is what mine right. currently does. But my thinking is, you know, with your wife, you can create another child, but with your child, you can't create another wife. So <laughs> now that's that's right. very interesting. I like that take. Now in context, in context to the movie sixty five, the reason why I believe he had the picture is because she was sick and dying. And yeah. she was on his mind, and it was in his entire motivation for doing reason. this thing exactly. that he did not want to do. And he needed that reminder. Yeah, um, and it would have been weird if it would have been a, a picture of the whole family and he cut his wife's face out. Then we'd have a different discussion. <laughs> it's, like a the, um, yeah. it's like the Homer thing with the uh, uh, in the Simpsons. He's you know working in the um, power plant, and and there's yeah. all these like there's this. I can't remember what episode it is, but. He covers up a whole bunch Probably of grimy. different warnings. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> covers up a whole bunch of different warnings on this wall and right. puts a picture of Maggie in the middle. And the, all the letters that he covers up spell, do it for her. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It was one of those episodes yeah. where I went, oh, cartoons can make me tear up and choke up. Yeah. You yeah. bastards. <laughs> and then they did it. Futurama did it with the damn dog. You effers. Oh, yes. Bastards. Bastards. Oh, the anyway, Bastards. thank you for the text and for the voicemails, 801-471-0462. You can also film sack at gmail.com. Us. That's a uh, an email Commas. address. Commas. Yeah. Commas. Is that the Greek? That's the, uh, that's the Greek. Uh, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and we'd love to hear from you. Our next film. We'll, oh, no, wait. I got to do Patreon first. Get Check this out. Patreon. Yeah. Okay. We use check. it to help fund the show. If we didn't have it, we'd be screwed. Uh, the show would not be able to make any money at all, and we would be kind of like out in the wind. Uh, who knows how things would go. But because of your fine help and support, we continue mm-hmm. to, to to roll on. And we'd love to have you guys in this brand new month of September to join us so that you can never have to deal with commercials. You get pre-show content every week, a real good one today, I think. So, yeah. uh, And you get all these in perpetuities. You can go back and listen to the, to the previous ones as well once you join up. Uh, I think you guys will really like it. You get movie-related art prints from me in the mail, other cool monthly stuff, but you can't get any of it if you don't sign up today at patreon.com slash film sack. Okay. That's all I'm saying. It's not hard. It's easy. Go get in there today and support your favorite movie show. And to everyone who already does our massive thanks, your direction. Thank you so much. You're the best. Uh, our next film. I don't even know. I didn't write it down. Oh, we we're sneaking been, something in. Yeah. We have been convinced if by mm. uh, this week's events. We have been convinced to watch and sack The Flash. Let's oh, go. my gosh. The, the Flash. Flash. Brand new. The out newest. on Max. Right? Max, Max. 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 Another week on the Max. Yeah. Uh, we're, we should start calling ourselves Film Max. Film Max. Yeah. We are on Max a lot. They get the, they get yeah. the movies, right? It's yeah, like HBO movies. always does. They uh, used the movies, to. Yeah. They like took they, all the cartoons off, but whatever. Dicks. Um, but they left some crappy ones, so it's all right. That's true. Yeah, it's <laughs> just something. Um, they they got rid of the the old uh, Flintstones and the old Jetsons, and re- and all they have on there is the ones where they tried to reboot it, and they're terrible. Ooh, horrible, terrible. Brian, you is that the one John K did? Didn't he do no, one? No, well, or was it, that the he? Yogi ones? That was the. I don't know. Did yeah. you do that before? John K did some. John K did some uh, from your Rena Stimpy. Did you do did that some, before he started uh, slapping the ass? Of people at his office and oh no he'd been doing that his entire (laughs) life and you know he lived in canada and so since he could whether you should or not wait a minute what does canada have to do with it well they you can date uh he exploited people but i think you can uh, be in physical contact with uh with people uh, 16 i think and unlike the u.s so he's in canada so he could i think he could legally get away ethically not so much is that true canada Canada has laws that you can get on get it on with a 16 year old 
I'm not one hundred percent sure on that. That's just what I read. That's, right. that's internet information. That doesn't Don't sound take right to me. Sam, Randy, ask Sam. What's the age of consent in Canada? <laughs> right. I'll get back to you. All right, let us. I'll know. get back to All you. Right. Right. Anyway, that's next week. The Flash. Be ready for it. In the meantime, filmsack.com is our website, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, Patreon.com/slash/filmsack would go a long way to keeping the show alive forever. Filmsack at gmail.com and leave us reviews wherever you get your shows. That helps us out a lot as well. That's going to do it for us. For me, for Brian, for Brian, and for Randy. None of your business. We'll see you next time. Get more at frogpants.com. You're making me f***ing nervous.